Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to explore properties of horizontal, vertical, parallel, and perpendicular lines. So just an important note, um, this is repeated from last class. We are skipping sections 2, 1 to 2, 3, um, because they cover a concept that we actually don't do in our curriculum. So from this point forward, just a little bit of vocabulary uh, changing, right? If you see the word function, Replace that with the word equation anywhere in your textbook. Just do a little mental replacement. And if you see, create these symbols that look like fx, gx, hx, just mentally replace those with a y. And when you take college algebra, you'll actually learn what those things are. Okay. All right, so for example, <clears throat> um, if you saw fx equals 3x minus 2, you would translate that to y equals 3x minus 2. OK, so moving on to today's lesson. I've got three points here, 7, 2, negative 4, 2, and 0, 2. Okay. So if I plot all three points, I've got I, 7, 2 means go over 7, up 2. And negative 4, 2, left 4, up 2. And 0, 2 means don't go left or right, just go up 2. So I've plotted the three points. If I connect those three points with a line, what word could you use to describe that line? Horizontal. Horizontal. If I wanted to write an equation for the line that goes through those three points. Yeah, yeah. So let's think about why that's the equation. Every point on that line, like look at these three points, 7, 2, negative 4, 2, 0, 2. They have something in common, right? What do they have in common? The y coordinate is 2, right? So that's how, that's how easy it is to write the equation. You go, oh, look, all the y coordinates are 2. My equation is y is 2. The y coordinate is always 2, so y equals 2. All right, if I wanted to calculate the slope of this line, right, I can pick any two points. Which two points do you want to use? 72. 7, 2, and one more, 0, 2. Okay. So pick two points and calculate the slope. Right, so we often, we often denote slope with the letter M, and we calculate it as a change in Y over a change in X. What's the difference in the Y coordinates? Zero, yeah, because my y coordinates are both two. So this is going to be two minus two over seven minus zero, right? So two minus two over seven minus zero. That gives me zero over seven. And what's zero divided by seven? Zero, okay? So the slope is zero. Slope of a horizontal line is always going to be zero, right? Because all the y coordinates are going to be the same. All right, let's do another set of three points here. Now I'm going to plot the points. Where? The heck? Okay, here we go. 4, 2, 4, 5, and 4, negative 3. So that means go right 4, up 2, right 4, up 5, and right 4, down 3. Okay. If I connect these three points with a line, what word could I use to describe that line? Vertical. Okay, and then what do all three of these points have in common? They all have an x coordinate of 4, so that's the equation of the line. x is 4. The x coordinates are all 4, so my equation is x equals 4. All right, let's look at the slope of this line. Pick any two of these three points. So let's just do the first two. Okay. So my slope, which is a change in y over a change in x, or a difference in the y's over the difference of the x's. So I subtract. Let's say 2 minus 5 over 4 minus 4. Subtract the y coordinates, subtract the x coordinates, and I get negative 3 over 
zero. What is negative three divided by zero? Zero. Undefined. Undefined. You can't divide by zero, right? Can't divide by. So this we say is undefined. How many people have heard you can't divide by zero? Okay, how many people know why? Nobody? <laughs> That's okay. So I'll come back to that in a second, but let's just come to our big conclusions about vertical and horizontal lines. The equation for a horizontal line, right, has the form y equals a number, and the slope of horizontal lines is zero. The equation for a vertical line has an equation that looks like x equals a number, and the slope of vertical lines is undefined. All right, let's take a little detour. You don't have to write this down. Um, I'm not going to test you on it or anything, but I just want to explain why you can't divide by 0. So let's say I wanted to do 5 divided by 0, and I want to know what that equals. What do, you do, what do you call something if you don't know what its value is? A variable, yeah. What do you want to call it? X, sure, we don't know what it is, we'll call it X. Okay, so um, if I wanted to solve this equation, I want to figure out what X equals, how, what, what would you do? I would multiply both sides by zero, right? I do times zero, times zero, and over here, the zeros are supposed to cancel, right? Because I got one on top and one on the bottom. Cancel, cancel. And I get 5 equals, what's x times 0? Zero? 0, no matter what x is, multiply by 0, you're going to get 0. That is not equal. That's not true, right? There is no number x that I could put there that could make that equation true, right? Because no matter what x is, when you multiply by 0, you get 0. So this is impossible. This, you would say this equation has no solutions. There is no x that could make that true. Nope. No. No. <laughs> um, right, right, no. I has to do with square roots of negatives, which is another thing that We've told, don't even think about it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I has nothing to do with this. Okay, so the general process for finding the equation of a horizontal or a vertical line. To find the line that has an undefined slope and passes through 5, negative 7, you first you would say zero in on that undefined slope. That means the line is vertical. And then the vertical line has an equation of the form x equals a number. And to know what that number is, just take the x coordinate because we're doing x equals a number, so pick the x coordinate. So it would have the, line, the equation x equals 5. Right. So very similar kind of problem, but this time we're going to find the equation of a line that has a slope of 0 okay, and goes through the point 3, 2. So if the line has a slope of 0, what does it look like? Ver horizontal. Slope 0 is horizontal. The slope is 0, it's horizontal, and it goes through the point 3, 2. So I like to just draw a picture rather than thinking about... A picture always helps me. So we've got a horizontal line that goes through the point 3, 2. So here's 3, 2 right here, horizontal line. Okay. Every point on that line has something in common. The y coordinate's going to be 2. Yeah, you could just pick any other random point. I went over some amount and then up 2. This is something comma 2. This is 3 comma 2. Every point on this line has a y coordinate of 2, so its equation is y equals 2.
All right. We've got three lines graphed over here. They appear to be parallel, right? You guys know what parallel means? Never touching? Yeah. So um, looking at their equations, what is the slope of each of these lines? Two, just two. The x is not part of the slope, yeah. So it's just the number that's touching the x is the slope. So you can identify the slope from the equation of the line because these are all y equals mx plus b form. So the number touching the x is the slope. So it looks like they all have the slope 2, right? And it turns out that two lines are always parallel if their slopes are equal. If they have the same slope, they're parallel. If they're parallel, they have the same slope. All right, here's a graph of two perpendicular lines. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. So um, L1 has the points 0, 4, right there, and 3, 2, right there, right? Two points on the line. So let's find the slope of L1. Slope of line 1. So the two points on line one are these guys. And somebody tell me how to find the slope of this. Rise over run. Which means, what's the vertical change between these two points? Yeah, four minus what? Two, yeah, subtract the y-coordinates. And then zero minus three, subtract the x-coordinates. So you end up with two-thirds. There's the slope of line one. Oh, yes, negative thirds. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to look at line two, which appears to be perpendicular to line one. Points on line two would be zero, negative two, there's one, and two, one, there's another. And I want to find the slope of the line through those two points. Slope of line two, rise over run. How much does, what do, you, um, what do I put on top? One minus negative two. One minus negative two, sure. One minus negative two, right? So if I, if I started with this y coordinate, the one, when I subtract the x coordinates, which one do I have to start with? The two, yeah, I have to go in the same direction. So this is going to be 2 minus 0. So 1 minus negative 2, that is 3. 2 minus 0 is 2. So those two slopes, how are they related? They're flipped. You flipped the fraction over. 2 thirds became 3 halves. And 1's negative and 1's positive. So it turns out that that's always true about perpendicular lines. They have what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite means one's positive and one's negative, and reciprocal means the fraction is flipped. All right, so spend a little time working through the activities. Starts on the next page. I'll answer questions. Um, these are going to be very much like the homework six homework, like finding equations of lines. So spend some time with these. I'll help you. We can do a couple on the board if you need it, um, and then we're going to move on to the next class. Okay, so for uh, lesson eight, in this lesson we're going to look at plots of some real life data, okay, and explore how to use a line to um, represent that data. So we're going to be doing more in this lesson with finding the equation of a line. So we'll be reinforcing what we just talked about. Um, but doing some real life stuff. Okay. So in 1982, drunk drivers were responsible for 25,165 deaths in car accidents. Okay. That was 57.3% of all fatalities due to car accidents. And this table lists the percentages of fatalities due to drunk driving for several different years. Okay, so we've got 82, various years from 82 to 99 and the percentage of fatalities related to alcohol in car accidents. So to display this data, um, the data in this table, we could use a scatter plot 
And we represent each of these things, 1982, 57, 1985, 51, as a point, right, where each point has year percentage. So actually, just to um, make things a little bit easier, I let 1980 be like year zero. I started counting in 1980. So 1982 is represented with just a two. Okay. All right, so let's look at, um, at this point right here, point A, this point. What are the coordinates of that point? 850, yeah. <laughs> 8, right, is the x coordinate, and 50 is the y coordinate. 850. Okay, how about this point right here? It's not on a nice cross section. It's like not on, on a nice intersection point. Nope, that was there. I just colored over it. Yeah. It is 1999. Yeah, how do you know? It's the last point, right? It's the last point. And all of these points represent a point from the table, right? So that last point has to be this guy. So we know its exact coordinates are actually 19, because it's 19 years after 1980, comma 37. Right? So this is... 19, and then when you go over, we couldn't tell exactly from the graph, but from the table, we knew that that was at 37, and that this is at 19. All right, so you've got the points A and B labeled. Does this scatter plot suggest any kind of a relationship between the year and the percent of fatalities? It looks like a declining line. It looks like over time, the percent of fatalities, so sorry, is decreasing. Okay. So yeah, it looks like there's a, a decreasing linear relationship. Decreasing. So in the scatter plot, I'm going to draw any line that, that looks like it fits the data, right? So this is a completely subjective process for us right now. There is an objective way to find the best line, but we're not going to um, worry about it in this class. We'll just do it subjectively. I'm going to eyeball it, try to draw in a line that all the data is close to. So maybe something like that. That thing is called a fit line or a best fit line. A straight line, right. Not connecting them with with a up and down thing, but just one straight line that seems to capture the trend of the data. Okay, so you might get something like this. I, was gonna, I drew it, I did one in a computer. Okay. So it seems to be roughly linear. We can sketch a line that comes close to the data points, and we say that T and P are approximately linear related. T for time and P for percent fatalities. Okay, so of all the lines that we could draw near the point, the best line, which is the one I graphed, has a name, and it's called the line of best fit or the least squares regression line, or more simply, the regression line. So it's just some vocabulary that means the line of best fit. Okay. Finding an actual line of best fit is something that calculators and computers can do, and you can do it too if you take a statistics course. We're not going to find it in this class, but um, when we draw a line of best fit, keep in mind that we are just trying to draw a line that it's close to all the points. And we're only going to be approximating the actual line of best fit. And then once you have it, you can use it to make predictions about the data. So our line of best fit, I would like to use to predict the percent of fatalities to drunk driving in 1993. So 1993 is what T value? Thirteen, yeah. How many years after? We started counting in 1980. 
So 19, 1993 is equivalent to t equals 13. So if I find 13 on my t-axis, I can go up to the line and use the line to estimate the percent of fatalities. Right? What does it look like? 42, 43, something like that. So it looks like 13, comma 42, I'll say, is on the line which means 1993 had approximately 42% fatalities. Okay. So we can use that line to make predictions. Yeah. All right, so using the graph of this line, I'm going to pick two points that have nice coordinates. So you can pick any two points on the line, right, because it'll always give the same slope and the same equation. Pick any two points. I'm just going to pick two that are nice, okay, meaning they have easy-to-find coordinates. Okay? I'm not going to pick any of the points from the scatter plot. I want points on the line. Okay, so let's see. I've got... Um, one here that goes through a nice grid point, 16, comma 40, right? So that's one of the ones I picked, 16, comma 40. And then the other one I picked was 2035. Um, looks like it's on the line. It's not a perfect grid point, but it looks pretty good, 2035. So I picked those two points that were on the line. And I'm going to use those two points to find the equation of a line, which is what you were just working on in your activities. Okay, so using those points, we find the equation of the line. Step one for finding the equation of any line is to determine its slope, right? And if I have two points, slope is change in y over change in x. But for us, the variables aren't x and y, they are t and p. So I'm actually looking for change in p over change in t. All right, so now the change in p, I subtract the p coordinates. And again, you can go in either order, 40 minus 35 or 35 minus 40, as long as you do the same order for the x-coordinates. So let's see, I'm going to do 40 minus 35, which means when I do x, I have to do 16 minus 20. Correct. So now I subtract 40 minus 35 is 5, 16 minus 20 is negative 4, so I get negative 5 fourths, which is, you could also write as negative 1.25 if you want, if you like decimals better than fractions. I don't know why you would. Fractions are awesome, right? All right, so now if we want to find the equation of the line, we start by writing y equals mx plus b, right? That's the equation of a line. I'm going to use x's and y's, and I'll just change it to t's and p's at the very end, just because we're used to x's and y's. All right, so, but my x is actually t, and my y is actually p, yeah. <clears throat> Maybe I'll change it now. Okay, so this is going to be p equals m times t plus b. Change it now. Okay, I know the slope, right? We just calculated the slope in step one, so I'm going to replace the m with the slope. So I have p equals negative 1.25t plus some unknown y-intercept b. Okay. Now, how do I find that y-intercept? That's the last thing I need is the y-intercept. How do I find it? Correct. You pick one of the two points. Let's use this one since it's already underlined. Okay, so I'm going to, this is a t comma a p. So 16 is t and 40 is p. So replace the p with 40. 
replace the t with 16. And now the only thing unknown in that equation is b, and I can solve for it. So negative 1 and a quarter times 16 would be negative 20, I think. Add 20 to both sides, and you get b is 60. Am I done? I have one last thing to do. What is it done? Go ahead and you got to uh, Yes, I got to write the whole equation now that I know what B is. Yeah. So I have this was my equation where I was almost done. I just had to figure out what B is. I did the work over there. Last thing is negative 1.25t plus now I know B is 60 and that's the equation of my line. Okay, so write the regression equation here. We just found it. It was p equals negative 1.25t plus 60. Okay. All right, in this case, sure. Yes. Correct. Yeah, we're going to finish class 8 on Monday, and so it won't be due till Wednesday. Okay, um, in this case, we can figure out how accurate we were when we picked nice points on the line. So the equation of the actual line graphed according to a computer program was negative 1.9x plus 58.63. How close were our values of negative 1.25 and 60? Pretty close. Not bad for just eyeballing the points. Yeah. All right, let's use our regression line this one. This is the regression line. I'm going to use that line to predict the percentage of fatalities due to drunk driving in 1993. So we already did that by looking at the graph. We looked at 1993, went up and over, right? We said about 42 percent. I'm going to use my equation to do the same, answer the same question now. So 1993 we said is equivalent to, what just happened? There we go. 1993 means t equals 13. So I'm going to take my equation, p equals negative 1.25. I'm going to replace the t with a 13. And I'm going to figure out what p is when t is 13. So negative 1.25 times 13, I don't think I can do that one in my head. Negative 1.25 times 13 plus 60 comes out to 43.75. That is P. Yeah. So we had estimated from the picture, from the graph, that it was about 42%. But turns out if you use the equation, you get 43.75%. So this is pretty close to our 42% in part 4B, right? A little more accurate now than just eyeballing it from the graph. Okay, so 1993 was it within the range of data that I had. I gave you some data from 1982 to 1999. 1993 is somewhere in between there. So we call that interpolation. When you use a data point that's in the data that you, within the range you already have, we call that interpolation. Like inter means between, right? Inter, inter between interpolation. If I use the regression line to predict the percentage of fatalities in 2002, right, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I have to figure out what what t value is 2002 correspond to? 22. 22 years after 1980. 
So I'd put a 22 into this equation, negative 1.25 times 22 plus 60. And I get 32.5. So that is expected. It's following the trend of it's going down over time, right? So I get 32.5%. And because 2002 was outside of the date ranges that I gave you data for, right? It's not between 82 and 99. We call that process extrapolation. Yeah, we're making a prediction. As a part, yeah, yeah, we, we use estimate or predict in either case, whether you're doing interpolation or extrapolation. Yeah, Jari. 22 was because they gave me the year 2002, and I started measuring time in um, 1980. You want me to go to the previous page, Jerry? It's up as far as it goes. Previous page? Okay. 